Hi friends, my name is Borrodante. Let's talk about making Photoshop fast. Anytime I compare any program on this channel to Photoshop, I end up saying that Photoshop is faster. But thing is, it's not exactly easy to make Photoshop really fast. As fast as it can be. And there are a couple of reasons for that, so let's cover that. So right now I reset all the settings to the worst case. And I'll show you uh, the problem that I'm having. I hope the recording will be fast enough. So right now I'm gonna make a stroke. This document is 4000 by 5500. And this is the speed of the stroke I have. It's like really slow and the problem is... These are kind of like big strokes at the moment, and if we zoom in, if I'll make it a lot smaller, it will still have a certain lag. Now, this doesn't necessarily happen on your system if you have a decent NVIDIA card of this millennia. <laughs> it's gonna work pretty normal with default settings on the first stage of the problem. But I'm using the Wacom Cintiq tablet, the Companion 2. And it has the uh, internal Intel graphics card, and it's really slow. So we can't rely on it all that much. A big portion of the processing should go to the CPU. So we have to change some of the balance in the preferences in the performance tab. So first of all, we of course don't turn off the use the graphics processor, because otherwise we're gonna miss some cool features. But what we have to do is we move to the basic level. That's one thing that works when you have really like lame graphics card that is a part of a motherboard. Now the other stuff is contrary to what it says in the description here. Even if you work with huge resolutions the way I do, you still shouldn't work with a lot of cache levels. And actually you have to move it to the minimum. Now in the latest versions of Photoshop, this thing is gonna reset to two levels after I restart Photoshop. Apparently they decided to force it to at least two levels. But really, the less levels you use, the better it works if you have a lame graphics card. And the second thing is the cache tile size. Also, minimum size. What the cache tile size means is when you're making a stroke, it will be changing the image, right? So right now I'm making a stroke and each time, like even if I'm making a stroke like this, you see it's still kind of leggy, even though it's like insanely small. It's kind of can't really reach my cursor. It's not real time. That's because every time I update the canvas, it has to update a pretty big square around the place that I change. That's what the cache tile size is, in this sense. This is the minimum square that graphics card will be updating every time I change anything on the canvas. Now, big tile size sounds like a cool idea if you have a powerful graphics card and you work with huge resolutions and you're changing like really big strokes. In that case, it will be working with big pieces at a time. Therefore, it will be working faster when changing huge pieces of the image. But when you have a lame graphics card, it's gonna be slow anyway. It's just that it will also be slow when it's gonna be working with small strokes. So we'll lower down everything to basic, one cache level, that will reset to two, and 128 kilobytes or bits, I don't know, for the cache size. Now we restart Photoshop, and now we're having a much quicker brush stroke, especially noticeable when we're at a very small size. It's probably not catching it on the video, because video is recording at 30 or even 25 FPS. But obviously the stroke right now is appearing at 60 FPS. So the update is super fast when the brush stroke is small. Which is really important, because small brush strokes is mostly what you're gonna work with. You work with big strokes only in the beginning of the image, and then mostly you work with smaller pieces putting some details on. So this is a huge difference. Now, lags don't end here. There's another horrible thing that is connected to Windows 10. 10, 8 and 7. All the latest Windows have this problem. And that problem is called Windows Ink. Now, right now I have Windows Ink turned on and it's working the way it would usually work for anyone who's using Photoshop 
without any special settings. So yeah, as you can see, we're reset to two cache levels, but everything else works the way it's supposed to. <clears throat> now, apparently there's a problem. Uh, the problem with the fact that I won't be able to show you the lag. Because apparently, after you fix it once, you can't make it bad again. <laughs> so, I won't be able to show you the problem, but I can show you the solution. You can check it on your own system and you'll see that lag. The problem of Windows Inc. is that it was supposed to be a system that is set up for using the interface, the buttons and everything in the system. But sadly, it still works while you paint. And it's creating one nasty problem. Now, I want to point out though, this is not the kind of problem you can solve by tweaking the settings in pen and touch. I mean, turning off flicks and reducing the time of press and hold helps a lot, but it doesn't remove all the lag. The thing I'm talking about right now is unfixable with standard settings. And again, you're not gonna see it in my system, but... Whenever you're making a stroke, you can see how whenever, like, I'm tapping right now and it's already painting immediately, like, it's no lag, absolutely immediate appearance of the stroke. It feels very natural, like, the moment I touch it, it's like a wet paint. You immediately create a mark on the surface. And I'm not talking about the build-up setting, because build-up creates a spot when you're not moving the brush at all, like this. But even if you would have it on, it would create one copy of this pattern and then there would be like a bit of a step, like 10 pixel step that is created by Windows to separate the difference between a swipe and the pressing on the button or something. So the system would understand, do you want to press a button or like swipe it down for whatever reason. So to segregate those two types of gestures, it creates this little bit of a step. You can notice it if you open Photoshop and try to make strokes and really pay attention to the way they appear in the beginning. You'll see that you won't be able to create such tiny strokes. Now, there used to be a solution to this on Windows 7. As far as I remember, I could fix it by turning off Use Windows Ink in Photoshop settings in Wacom Tablet Properties. You turn it off, that will create a problem that, as you can see right now, the brush pattern doesn't turn. Because the tilt is off and also the pressure sensitivity is off. I can't press slightly or anything. So, right now, no Windows ink means my pen turned into a mouse. And in Windows 7, to solve this problem, in case you're using Windows 7, as some people still do, uh, what you do is, you right-click on your Photoshop .exe file, or whatever, like the uh, link to it, and you go to Compatibility, and you use Compatibility Mode for... I don't remember, not even Vista, but there was Windows XP. So you're using that, and in that case, your tablet will not use Windows Ink at all, because there was no such thing in Windows XP. So that worked, and it worked perfectly, there was no lag. Now, by the way, another huge problem of this lag, if in strokes it's not that big of a deal, whenever you're using Liquify, that's where the real problem happens. Right now, as you can see, I can easily change the size of the brush and move everything around really fast. No lag whatsoever, it's like super fast. But in the newest versions of Photoshop, like this one, when you don't have the fix, the one that I can turn off now, this would be a nightmare. There's some kind of glitch going on when the brush pattern that you're seeing right now, the preview, starts spazzing around on the screen and you can't really move the image the way I do. Like, if you move it not long enough, it will snap back, like it cancels the stroke if it's not big enough. So that was a nightmare, like Liquify couldn't handle it well at all. So, right now we turned off Windows Ink and it's all like this. So in Windows 7, compatibility mode worked fine, but actually there would be a bit of a problem with that, because I think if you're using compatibility mode, sooner or later Photoshop starts lagging. After like 10 minutes of working, you'll notice that it starts slowing down, especially when you're trying to use the Save As dialog or any Windows Explorer dialog from Photoshop. It starts loading super slowly. 
so maybe you should avoid using the compatibility mode. Now, how to actually make the tablet work as a tablet without Windows Ink? We close Photoshop. We open Notepad. Don't worry, it's super simple. You type in hashtag use WinTab, which is apparently the alternative way of processing the strokes of a tablet or something. Before Windows Ink existed, there was WinTab, whatever that is. And the second line would be use system stylus zero. So this kind of thing, you can copy the lines from the description. Now you save this file as txt file with a specific name. And the specific name is psuserconfig.txt in the description. So here we go, we created this tiny txt file with two lines in it. Now let's put it in Photoshop settings folder. First things first, you go to this folder. In the system folder, users, then the name of your user, and then app data. It's important to type it in because it's an invisible folder. So we get here, we see these three folders. In here we go in roaming, Adobe, Adobe Photoshop, your version, and then your version settings. And we drop this file in here. You can see I already have it, you don't have it. So this is it, that's all you do. You turn off Windows Ink in Wacom settings, you create this tiny txt file and you drop it in the settings folder. That's it, then you start Photoshop again and you won't have any lag. I wish I would be able to show you the lag, but for some reason Photoshop doesn't want to go back to the lag apparently, even when I remove this file at all from the settings folder. This was like a huge problem, it was really unpleasant looking and unpleasant feeling. And I only recently discovered the way to make it work without Windows Ink in Windows 10. So this was a really cool discovery. Okay, now these are main tricks to make Photoshop work fast. One other thing, and that is not really a technical thing, more about your artistic choices, but... Don't use too dense brushes. Don't do the way I did a very short time ago. <laughs> I used to have all the brushes super dense, like everything had 1% step, because the brush patterns are super... like you see their pattern is very sharp, not blurry at all, with very specific details. And when you're having a very small step, you can create this effect of like there are lines appearing and it feels kind of like actual brush stroke with bristles and all. Especially it's well noticeable in Akira brush. You can see how I'm making a stroke and it's actually creating these lines inside of the stroke. And if you have a bigger step, you will see kind of like these steps going on. And this looks lame, but the thing is, having no lag in the stroke, and that is about any program. Any program will lag with 1% step. Well, not 1%, sometimes 1% means a lot, but the spacing when you don't see any steps. I don't know any program that wouldn't lag on a decent resolution. If you can go real time, you better do that. You can sacrifice all kinds of quality for your brush stroke. The real time factor is way more important. Because the thing is, the big strokes that you do in the beginning to create the base for your image, it's totally fine when they're nasty like that. Because you'll still cover them up with smaller strokes and then smaller strokes. And guess what, when they're small enough, the step kind of disappears. That's how brushes work. <laughs> I don't know, apparently they're kind of like disappearing in the resolution or something, but even the brushes with a big spacing, you won't see any step on them when they're small. So the point is, don't be afraid of nasty, artificially looking, like digital looking brushes with big strokes. It's totally fine, just because it won't really affect the results. You'll still cover it up. And the ability in working without any lag is way, way more important. So, yeah, nothing is supposed to be an obstacle between you and your idea, so... Make that spacing big. Also a good idea to use brushes with direction in Shade Dynamics. If you use angle, you use direction angle. Meaning the brush pattern will be rotating like a car in the direction of which you are painting. In this case, you can get away with a lot of nasty, huge steps. And the brush will be like really fast. This is one of my favorite brushes, by the way. It creates a pretty solid, sharp edge, and it's really, really fast. This right now is a huge brush. 
this is 100% on a very dense screen. Like in 72 points per inch, it will be this size. So it's a pretty big brush. So yeah, there's that. Hope it was helpful for people who use Photoshop. I assume most people use it anyway, even if it's not your program of choice for painting, you still use it here and there, because, I don't know, everyone uses Photoshop. So it's a good thing to know how to make things work and avoid any lag and have Liquify working without crazy lags and glitches. So there's that. If you have any more questions, ask them in the comment section below. And I thank you for watching if you did. I guess you did if you're here. Leave a like and subscribe. Tell a friend. Go real time. Do whatever you want. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. One thing I didn't expect is that one day I would be bummed out that I can't make Photoshop lag enough. Look at this sexy 60 FPS. I know you can't. <laughs>